Sometimes the people that care about us have some good points, even when they may seem like they're criticizing. It may seem like they're saying things that are negative and, and it's hard to hear because maybe they're saying we're doing things wrong. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes there is an easier way. Sometimes there is a better way. Sometimes we need to stop doing what we're doing and maybe start doing something else. And uh, we're going to see here in Exodus chapter 18 uh, that uh, Moses is going to have his father-in-law come and criticize him a little bit. Uh, his father-in-law has some perspective, some some distance from this. He's going to see what Moses is doing and going to be like, it ain't good what you're doing, friend. It ain't good. You need to You need to rethink this. There's something else that you should be doing. And Moses is going to listen to him. Uh, so if you've ever had somebody give you constructive feedback and it didn't feel so good, but uh, in the end, you swallowed your pride and accepted it, or perhaps you haven't yet sw swallowed your pride and maybe you need to do that. We need people in our lives who are going to give us good feedback, people who are going to not just throw stones, but are going to give us some good advice. All right, friends, uh, I'm so glad to have you along here for the ride. Just a reminder that uh, uh, as of tomorrow, if you're watching this in real time, uh, these Bible studies, we're going to take a week off for Christmas break. We'll come back on January 2nd. So this Friday will be the last Bible study until uh, the beginning of the new year. Let's open with a word of prayer, and then let's dive right into Exodus chapter 18. Lord God, we just pray that you would help us to listen. Lord, help us to celebrate other people's successes. And Lord, help us to see the people around us that celebrate our successes. And Lord, help us to be discerning in who we listen to. But even more so, help us to be discerning in, in what we take away from those people. Lord, help us to be willing to, to listen to uh, ideas and thoughts, even from people who don't seem to have our best in mind. Because sometimes even they are right. Lord, help us to be humble. Help us to receive uh, advice and criticism, even when it is hard. But help us to walk in faith in your footsteps. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. All right, we are in Exodus chapter 18. Uh, Moses and the Israelites have wandered through the wilderness some, and they're they're headed toward the mountain of God. That's where they're headed. They're going to have this meeting with God, and they're kind of figuring things out as they go along through the wilderness. And uh, they're having issues with water. They're having issues with, you know, grumpy people getting hangry and all that. The food has been solved. The water has been solved. And now they have another problem that's kind of coming up, and we're going to be talking about that here. If you have your Bibles, Exodus 18, or if you follow along right on the screen. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, heard about everything that God had done for Moses and for God's people, Israel, when the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, along with her two sons, uh, one of whom, whose name was Gershom, because Moses had said, I have been a resident alien in a foreign land. And the other, Eli uh, Elizer, uh, because he had said, the God of my father was my helper and rescu rescued me from Pharaoh's sword. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, along with Moses' wife and sons, came to him in the wilderness where he was camped at the mountain of God. He sent word to Moses, I, I your father-in-law, Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and, your, and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, bowed down, and then kissed him. They asked each other how uh, they have been and went into the tent. Moses recounted to his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake, and all the hardships that confronted them on the way, and how the Lord rescued them. So we see this, this genuine concern of uh, Jethro for Moses as a person. Right, uh, he tells them all the amazing stories of the, the the things that have happened. But then he also says, you know, hey, this is this has gotten hard coming out of the land of Egypt, leading a million plus person army going through the wilderness, or a million plus person nation. 
They they were slaves. They didn't have councils. They didn't have a history of, of having towns and all this kind of stuff. They were under the Egyptian rule. They didn't have the, you know, self-government. So they're basically having to form a government as they're wandering through the wilderness, while they're having to form an army, while they're trying to figure out how to get bread and water. And it's, it's kind of a bit of an undertaking. And even though they have God at the front of their column, there's a, been a lot of problems. And a lot of that weight has fallen on Moses' shoulders. And you can understand when he gets a sympathetic ear that he, uh, he, he wants to share. <laughs> he wants to unload a little bit of, uh, of the stress and the concern that he's had. Can you relate to Moses at all? Have you have you had to deal with some things in the past year, in the past years, and you're kind of a little stressed over the whole thing? Just one thing after the next happening, and, and you just can't seem to get out of it. But when you run into someone who genuinely cares about you, and at the same time, they have a little bit of a distance from, from your situation so that you can freely talk to them about what's going on without having to, you know, feel like you're gossiping about people because they don't know these people anyway. It's a really big deal, right? It's a really big thing. So we see, let's see Jethro's a reaction here. Jethro rejoiced over all the good things that the Lord had done for Israel. And when he rescued them from the power of the Egyptians, blessed be the Lord, Jethro exclaimed, who rescued you from the power of Egypt and from the power of Pharaoh. He has rescued the people from under the power of Egypt. Uh, now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods because he did wonders when the Egyptians acted arrogantly against Israel. Then Jethro, Moses, his father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God, and Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses, his father-in-law, in God's presence. The next day, Moses sat down to judge the people, and they stood around Moses from morning until evening. So we see that um, Jethro is there to to listen. He didn't he didn't try to fix. You know Moses was sharing about all the challenges and all the difficulties that he's had uh, with the with leading the nation and everything. And uh, Jethro helped him celebrate the successes. And he didn't try to fix the problems, right? He didn't try to um, you know just try to you know, give, give advice on everything. We see that he, he, he just helped Moses un, unload, decompress. And that's a good, good advice. If you have someone in your life that, that you're trying to help and they just, they need to vent, you know, sometimes you just, just let them vent, you know, don't try to fix all the problems. Don't try to answer all the questions. Let them just share their frustration with having these questions that they haven't found answers to. But then we do see that Jethro is going to start following Moses around. He's heard the complaints that Moses has, and now he's going to see how things operate. The next day, Moses sat down to judge the people. You know, there's conflicts, and he's he's kind of sorting out problems. This this family's fighting with that family over there, and they're squabbling over whose sheep is this and who stole somebody's goat, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw everything he was doing for them, he asked, What is this you're doing for the people? Why are you alone sitting as judge while all the people stand around you from morning until evening? What, what you doing, Moses? What's going on here? This doesn't seem like good. I mean, everybody knows that Good customer service. People come in, they they get serviced, and then they, then they leave. They don't have to just keep waiting all day long, for days on end. That's not good. That doesn't work at McDonald's, and it doesn't work in the courthouse. Uh, in the United States, we're at that place where um, you you get charged with a crime, and it could be years before you actually get a a day in court. Years. It's it's outrageous. It's. I still don't know how that can't be a violation of the Constitution where we are, where we have the right to a speedy trial. 
but uh, I'm not in charge of anything. So, uh, so Moses replies to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. So I'm God's representative, right? Whenever they have a dispute, it comes to me and I make a decision between one man and another. I teach them God's statutes and laws. What you're doing is not good. <laughs> Moses is leading a million people through the wilderness. He defeated Pharaoh, crossed the Red Sea miraculously. He strikes rocks and water gushes out. And there's this old dude who tells him right to his face, what you're doing is not good. Who is this guy? He's a shepherd. What does he know about anything? You know, that's not, not that's not an unfair assessment of it, right? We're talking about the president of the People's Republic of Israel, right? Israel doesn't have that many more people today than it did the nation of Israel um, over in the Middle East doesn't have that many more people than it did back at this time. Like you crunch the numbers and it's not too far off. I mean, we we would imagine that the, the prime minister of Israel would be given quite a bit of respect. And, you know, who's going to come up to him and sh shake th their finger at him and say, what you're doing is not good. So you can kind of see how maybe Moses would kind of bristle a little bit at this, right? Maybe not listen to what this old guy has to say, this old shepherd that's, you know. He says, you will certainly wear out both yourself and these people who are with you because the task is too heavy for you. You can't do it alone. <laughs> do you know any guys in your life? Or if you are a guy, you know what I, what I mean when I say this. What? What? You just watch me. What do you mean I can't do it alone? You just watch me. I'll get it done. He says, now listen to me. I will give you some advice and God be with you. You be the one to represent the people before God and bring their cases to him. Instruct them about the statutes and the laws and teach them the way to live uh, and what they must do. But you should select from all the people able men, God-fearing, trustworthy, and hating dishonest prophets. Place them over the people as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They should judge the people at all times. Then they can bring ev you every major case, but judge every minor case themselves. In this way, you will lighten your load, and they will bear it with you. If you do this, and God so directs you, you will be able to endure, and all these people will be able to go home satisfied. I mean, Moses is judging these really hard cases, which really does need him to go and inquire of the Lord, right? But then there's a whole bunch of this garbage cases where it's just stupid stuff that, oh, it's you two again, right? These two guys again. They know what's right. They know what's wrong, but they just keep on, they just can't stop, you know? This is not something that Moses needs to deal with. This is something that someone else can deal with. These two people that are just, take them both out and give them a good sound beating, right? They, they both need it. Or, or maybe there's one person that keeps um, causing problems in the camp and someone needs to deal with that. But that's why you have rules. That's why you have a law, right? Unlike the United States anymore, where... You get judged based on the color of your skin, and you get judged based on um, your political persuasions. You get based on judged based not on what you did, but on how the jury or the judge feels about what you did. And and we get this extremely uneven application of the law. The point of the law is if you do X, this is the punishment for that, right? a process to go through and determine uh, when it is in doubt what has actually transpired and who has actually done it. How should these things be solved? How should these situations be handled? In a standardized, even, and fair manner. And when there's unusual situations or um, 
can, you know, situations that, that require a little more, you know, application, well, then it should be taken up by someone who is more senior, someone who, who, who can handle the uh, intricacies and, and kind of know how to handle a more difficult situation. But a lot of the problems can be dealt with these guys that are over 10 families. A lot of situations can be um, handled at that level. And if they can't handle it over it, you know, every five of these uh, groups of 10 can have someone who can kind of shepherd over those. The commanders of thousands can handle big problems. And then the problems that they can't handle, they can bring to Moses. This is good advice, isn't it? Called delegation. But you can just imagine how a lesser man would have heard this and said, who are you? I mean, that's what Moses came to Pharaoh and said, hey, this is what the Lord says. And Mo and Pharaoh was like, who are you? You're just, you're just some dude wandering out of the wilderness. I shouldn't listen to you. And sometimes we need to hear advice or things from people that we don't like or we don't think really have anything to contribute. If you want to have an honest assessment, um, make sure you listen to one of your enemies, right? People that don't like you, they won't hold back on their criticisms of you. They'll point out things that are, that are glaring. They'll point out the unpopular uh, or the, uh, they'll point out the things that people are too polite to point out. You either need an enemy to point them out for you or you need a child to point them out to you, right? Child, children aren't filtered. <laughs> They'll just tell you just what they think right off the bat. And that's not to say you should take all of that alone, but you should take to heart advice, criticism, and, and, and put it through a filter. Surround yourself with people that support you, that love you, that care about you. But also make sure you're not insulating yourself from hard criticism and and pushback and and thoughts. Uh, have have coaches in your life that will speak into your life and say some hard things sometimes that will hold you accountable. Because if you don't have that in your life, you're going to be end up doing stupid stuff like what Moses is doing here. From dawn to dusk, he's he's he's. Covering these court cases, and so many of these things are just so stupid that they don't. It wasn't just that it was going to burn Moses out, it was going to burn the people out. Can you imagine waiting for days and days and days to have your court case heard? There's only one guy that can try your case, and he he's already working all day long. So, how how do you solve this? Well, Sooner or later, the people were going to kind of rebel against that. And that's the truth. He wasn't just in danger of burning out. He was in, in danger of the people trying to figure out their own way of solving problems without him. Moses, verse 24, Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. So Moses chose able men from all Israel and made them leaders over the people as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They judged the people at all times. They would bring the hard cases to Moses, but they would judge every minor case themselves. Moses let his father-in-law go, and he journeyed to his own land. This guy wasn't trying to usurp Moses' authority. He didn't want anything. All he cared about was he cared about Moses. Finding those type of people in your life and listening to them it doesn't mean they're always going to be right. They're going to be wrong quite a bit. A lot of times they're not going to understand what's going on. Jethro came in. He looked around, gave his thoughts, and then he left. He, he wasn't there for the long haul. He didn't know all the ins and outs. He didn't know the whole situation. But he was able to give this feedback on this point. And some people, sometimes we need someone from the outside to come in and just kind of tell us the obvious stuff, the stuff that we're too close to to see. Are we able to hear criticism 
Are we able to hear advice from people? Or will we be too proud to hear what others have to say? Sometimes God speaks through others. I say that kind of a little bit in jest because oftentimes he speaks through others. We should be digging into the word of God because that's the primary way that he speaks to us. But then he also speaks through his believers, through other Christians to us. And when you put that through the filter of the Bible, is what they're saying biblical? Well, maybe maybe what they're saying is true. All right, friends, let me pray a prayer of blessing over you before we go. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would bless each and every one of us, that you would give us people in our lives that care enough about us to speak truth into our lives, who will speak blessing into us, but also give us um, advice and, and counsel. Lord, help us to find people that we can unload our, our burdens to, but then also um, find, some, find some good counsel. Lord, you are our counselor. Help us to run to you for wisdom. But Lord, help us not to be too proud to listen to others. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Hopefully you guys have a great uh, Christmas. There's a couple Bible studies, um, sermons, Christmas sermons up on the screen there. And uh, I will see you over there or I'll see you guys again tomorrow. God bless you all.